Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience and the second annual Custy Awards. Now, maybe you're asking, hey, Pat, didn't this come out in January last time? And the answer would be yes, but we found that there was too much recency bias baked into all the results. So we decided to release the voting a little bit later on. This is all voted on by you, the people out there, the most cussed things of the year. But it's not of 2019. It's of 2018. And frankly, the real reason is because we were too lazy, couldn't organize ourselves together. But we're here now. But it's not just me. Gary Anthorn is here. Jeff Feinberg is here as the panel to break down the most cussed things that have happened. Guys, when you went and reviewed the list, did it stick out to you? Like, I completely forgot about all this stuff. There were some nice memories. Because like you said, that this is a bit dated, but it brought back a lot of things that felt longer than a year ago. And a lot of the things that I thought we might be talking about actually happened in 2019. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here we are, and it's great to see these things on paper and and relive them. I've had an, a few little personal giggle attacks. Uh, last season we had, a, or last, the first annual Custies, we had a bunch of, you know, gig fits the entire way through. And I'm sure that's going to happen again, but I want to tell everyone out there, if you want to get into a draw for 20 DK dollars, there's a few ways to do so. You need to smash the like button for this episode, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, and tell me what you would nominate for the Custies for 2019. This way it helps me keep track of it for one thing. I can go back and look at it. So that'd be one way. Also, share this show around. Tell a friend if they ever want to get into the Pat Mayo experience. This is the show to do it and hit the entire Cust catalog. Uh, from every cuss corner that we've done so far. There's 20 of them or 21 of them or something like that. And there's more coming in the future, but retweet that show, share the show on Facebook, post about it on Instagram or whatever newfangled social media you got, and then just at me with your DraftKings handle and boom, we'll be good to go. Also rate, review, and subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, five-star review, DraftKings handle, something you enjoyed about the Custy Awards and you'll be in the draw for 20 DK dollars. But Without further ado, we need to get into the awards. However, we need to introduce the man of the hour. This is his show, and his name is... Tim Andergust! Tim Andergust. It's not my name. Heard it was! This show is named after you. It's the Custies. Yeah, in the same way that, like, Dean Martin and the Friars Club would roast somebody in their honor. No, no. This is all stuff that has come from a UR content generator machine like honest to god like this is all from you and you're not even trying no i mean i guess people if they're falling on that new fangled technology like the tiktok or whatever won't be able to go back and see all of the things that we've done but <laughs> i still think that there's a good chance that if people re- read some of them they'll realize i'm on the right side of these things and i hope today is an opportunity for me to face the matter squarely in the dock and say listen i'm right about these things more often than i'm wrong now Gary, and do you think that's going to end up being the case? No. Uh, <laughs> in fact, one might say that this is another thing Tim is going to be wrong about. So uh, it's good to start this on brand, I guess is what I'm getting at. Historically, when Tim believes what he's saying as he is right now, and he gives it to the people for a poll, he usually comes back like lucky to get 10%. So I, history has proven that um, people will again hear his takes. And they will once again, uh, it will reaffirm their take that he is crazy. Okay. Well, Tim, I think it's time we get into the awards. What do you say? Sure. How, Let's have at it. How many of these do you remember, do you think? <laughs> I, I, I will not lie. I have reviewed none of these. I am coming in ice cold, other than to know that I will be, I will be warm by the light of the truth, because anything I've said has to be the case. All right, well, shout out to Rob McIntyre for compiling all the curses, running all the polls, and tabulating the results. We got them here in front of us. I, Rob and I and Paul are the only three people that actually know. Jeff, looks like you have something to say. No, you're like the accounting firm that like, knows the results. Oh, I'm going to screw up at the Oscars, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Yeah, that one. Perfect. Yeah, whatever it is. Dude. There's like three people on the planet that know the results. Well, you I'm going to the Oscars, and then I got blamed for it. Oh, well, yeah, well don't, don't, I mean, let's, we'll let's get to the, the first Oscars award. Soon, don't worry. <laughs> let's get to the first <laughs> award then. The most reversed cursed thing 
of 2008 is going to be the first category up. This means that Tim said that something would happen, and it propelled the exact opposite thing to happen in a very good way. Or he said it wouldn't happen, and then it did happen. I guess that's the best way to describe it. And we're going to leave the big category at the end. If you hit the time codes, you're going to find everything. There's a specific category that you want to jump to. All right, Tim, there are five nominees for most reverse curse thing of 2018. Number one, Lamar Jackson. You declared that it was a surprise that Lamar Jackson fell out of the first round right before the 32nd pick, at which point the Baltimore Ravens traded up for the pick and drafted Lamar Jackson. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And it would have been a surprise because that guy is, by all all metrics, the second best rookie QB of that draft and could end up actually being the best. I'm willing to actually go that far. He literally, he he just said Lamar Jackson was the second best metric QB in the Mayfield Darnold. Josh Allen. Allen. When all is said and done, I think he's going to have either the best or second best career. I do. I I mean, the guys already led his team to the playoffs once. And it's fun. None of those guys have. I think it's probably going to happen again. I I enjoy that anyone just entering Tim's brain for the first time would assume that he's meaning Baker Mayfield is number one, this unnamed number one quarterback, (laughs) followed by Lamar Jackson, (laughs) when that is most certainly not the case. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later on, because there is a certain thing about that. Number two, nominee number two, the shape of water. Tim, quote, guaranteed the shape of water would not win Best Pitcher at the Oscars, which then it proceeded to do. Next up, the Washington Capitals. Tim has long been a proponent of the Washington Capitals, which you were, Tim, uh, causing them to continually lose in the playoffs. How many straight years do you think you picked Washington to win the Stanley Cup playoffs? Probably since Ovi's second year. Every year except for the couple of years where the Canadiens had good teams and I picked them instead. All right, so this past season, and again, this is 2018, you abandoned them, saying that they would lose in the first round, (laughs) causing them to what, Tim? What did they do? They, they won the Stanley Cup. That they did. Alex Ovechkin is still drunk. Brooks but I, you know, I still feel vindicated about that because I was on them year after year. Like, I was right. <laughs> yes, that, that, that is the point of these, Tim. I was right in the general sense of things. I he just was right that a great nucleus team that and everyone way, agreed had underachieved, like, was maybe going to win one day. This yeah. is why I am never getting off the Patriots are about to collapse bandwagon. <laughs> I won't get any credit if I didn't get on it. You're, you're not, not going to get, get any credit you anyway. Said 11 straight years. Oh. Eventually, you're going to be right. This is true. And I will be coming to collect on my credit. <laughs> you don't get any. There's right. none. Next one. Uh, there's Brooke, none. Brooks Kepka. Tim originally oh. declared Brooks Kepka as one of his top three picks to win the U.S. Open. However, when it came time to make the picks, he abandoned the pick, causing Brooks Kepka to win the U.S. Open. And finally, Wendy's. Tim had a year-long ban of Wendy's for their participation in giving out free nugs, in which their stock rose by $3. After he removed the ban, uh. the stock went back up by $2.50. Oh, there's one more here that I missed, too. The New York Jets. Tim picked the New York Jets to go 12-4 and four over the 2018 season. Instead, they went 4-12. and 12. Tim, what do you think is going to win oh. the most reverse curse thing of 2018? That, that's a tough one. <laughs> Can I ask a uh, question? Uh, one second, just let, let Tim jump in here. I guess it will be going to Shape of Water. Was, really? was, was that the one where they... Gave the wrong envelope. No, that no, was that was, that was the first the annual cast. Yes, yeah. that that actually. Yeah. If people want to go back and watch yeah. the you know, first edition of the cast, they are the, the most historical and curse of all time. I believe La La Land is tied with Jordan Spieth. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was that was the La La Land Jordan Spieth year. That was really and two only of the probably most because of ever. our brand did Jordan Spieth like. Get I don't points. know. That was that was a pretty well. It was it was the brand, and it was also the fact that anyone who was watching the shows and voted on the shows probably won money on yeah. that Ander curse. F- so fine, it's but I'm just remembered. saying. Yeah. Do you think that Danny Willett should cut Tim a check? I, I think all of those people who allege that I quote unquote was responsible for Willett winning the Masters and winning them money <laughs> should have remunerated me. Then I spent that that's, money. that's not that's not a bad take. Look, I I don't know what necessarily should win but sort of in your line of thinking with so much of the base of this audience being golf heads i think kepka is going to be up there or wendy's just because it's funny See, but i would I say all about the wendy's well, lamar why, why jackson you, why don't you should make win. your vote you just if you had yeah. your one vote which lamar, did, lamar jackson would you should win because the most entertaining and the and the, the ander curses that i enjoy are the ones with immediate satisfaction. Yeah. The one where something he tweets out something with such 
definitive nature and it is immediately shoved back in his face like Lamar Jackson. Like all these other things, it took a day, it took a week. For Wendy's, it took an entire fiscal cycle. No, the Lamar Jackson thing was immediate and I think that has to be rewarded. My vote, and maybe it's just because I'm a sports guy, but every sport, like anyone that cared about hockey, like knew what the Capitals were, knew they were perennial underachievers, knew how close as a roster they probably were. And the year that he bails, they literally were perennial like for a decade. Uh, that That's my pick. All right. Coming in third place with 14% of the vote, the best pitcher winner, The Shape of Water. That's such a trash movie, by the way. My God, that movie's bad. I agree. Well, I mean, it, I it, like it would not have won if, if you said it had no chance of winning. We all know that. Number two, the New York Jets with 25% of the vote as most uh, rivers you know cursed. We, I need to talk about that. Sam got hurt. I'm sorry. Like, he got hurt. And uh, you know what? The offense we thought was going to be there, the, the pieces weren't there. They aren't, like, super – Super stock the way they are for 2019. I, I, we, we might have to come up with best cussed excuse for next year. That could be a brand new category, pal. I'm not excusing. I'm explaining. There's a difference. No. Well, I mean, how do you know that Sam Darnold didn't get hurt because you picked him to go 12 and 4? That's probably no, what he happened. He got hurt because some goon on the dolphin stepped on his foot. Happens. Probably because he's cursed. And the winner, Jeff, you were correct. With 30% of the vote, the Washington Capitals winning the Stanley Cup was the most reverse curse moment of 2018. Tim, your thoughts? I mean, I don't think that should count because I think I was basically right in spirit, <laughs> even though I was wrong that particular year. So as with most of these awards, I reject the premise. <laughs> the, the ability you have to somehow take the exact premise of this show <laughs> and why these things are hilarious and just have it go completely over your head is almost commendable. It really is. You guys ready for the next category? Yeah. All right. Worst take factually incorrect. Number one, Sriracha, proclaimed by Tim to be the condiment of choice for only <laughs> hipster millennials, despite, I being stand by that. despite being developed by a housewife in the 1930s and has been around for almost 100 years. But not popularized. I think that's Superstar. Just, uh, will you shut up? Superstar. Tim, you <laughs> stated that by definition, superstars must transcend their sport into culture. Merriam-Webster defines superstar as, quote, someone who is considered extremely talented, has great public appeal, and can usually command a high salary, therefore showing him to be lying in his assessment of the definition of the word. No, hot I think those two are, are reconcilable. Hot dogs. You stated that eating hot dogs straight out of the can or straight out of the package without cooking them did not put you at risk for worms. <laughs> <laughs> Stop just <laughs> <at you. laughs> Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> that, that's probably I forgot about that one. Landslide, I Although oh. there's only one person on this show who ate raw hot dogs and drank the juice on the on the show, and it, it wasn't. I here. think I did that wearing a made a make America great, great again, again hat. He lost a bet. That's <laughs> yeah. what he had to do. And those were actually in brine. Those are actually yeah. edible. Yep. Like they well, sell those new hot dogs. You guys are tweeting at me about uh, they, they they're in brine too. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Last one. Subway. Tim, you have long declared Subday, Subway to be objectively, quote by you, the best sandwich chain, despite their stores costing about $2 to run every day, leading to very low overhead costs. The company is currently recording record low profits and recently closed 500 stores across the United States. Your thoughts? My thoughts are this this is the natural business cycle. Things contract and then they grow big again. And I'm not too worried about it. They do make the best sandwich. That's beyond question. That is absolutely not true. Oh, Their meatball man. sub cut the old oh. way. Wait, what was the okay, case? Let, let me ask you this. When was the last time you had a meatball sub from Subway cut the old way? I guess it's been at least 15 years. No, it hasn't been that long. When was the last time anyone... Cut the sub the old way because they think they stopped doing that 20 years ago. Most of the yeah, people employed. People no, crap. that's not true. Most of the people employed at Subway weren't even born when they used to cut it the old way. Or they're just too I stoned to you're... remember. I think the old way is Some. better. I, listen, I'm not saying this is a case against the old way. But if you, add, if you walked into a Subway right now, Jeff, and asked them to cut it the old way, would they have a fucking clue what you were talking about? That would require me to walk into a Subway. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. 
Well, yeah, you're right. You wouldn't be able to get it on your skip the dishes cut that way or the Uber Eats X Black or whatever it's called. Uh, they way. have a, a prepare special way note section. Yeah, they actually do. That's probably your best chance to actually getting it cut the old way if you wanted it, Tim. Yeah, you I, probably I put a link actually, to like I, a, no, a video on how to do it in the, the note section. section. You, what do you mean you can't go through the drive through? I need to see my sandwich being prepared in front of my eyes. Wait, Subway, wait, has, Subway drive-thrus? has a drive through. Yeah, so there's Subway drive throughs. Oh, there's tons of Subway. We have a friend who drove through the drive through because his sub was too expensive. <laughs> okay, then. What about, can you can you relate this story to us? I I don't know about this. He was gonna the, he was gonna get a lobster sub, and the amount was like thirty bucks, and so he said okay, and they just drove through and never got the sub. Sounds like a real classy individual. I thought that was like a completely different type of driving through. No. I just didn't think he said peace you out. Think he actually like, drove the physical store? <laughs> I didn't know that. He just... That's a terrible story. That's going to make yeah. worst, it's really... <laughs> worst stories of the year. So <laughs> really quick. Jeff, if it was you. Hot of, dogs. Of those oh, five, hot dogs? Yeah, hot it's, dogs. Pro- it's winning a price at least 75%. Look, Subway, Subway, I will say, is like the people's champ. Everyone, every, t- Tim is like. That's his number one brand loyalty thing. It's very, it's very relatable to Tim. But yeah, hot dogs are just a classic Tim story. That's well, I wasn't wrong about the first two at all. Like, I actually get dispute the categories in here. I mean, you're I mean, wrong. You would, you on would both then them. be factually incorrect about these factually incorrect takes. Yeah, like so. I stand by my claim. Someone who is really good at their sport but isn't world famous is not a superstar. Like in football, there's one superstar. His name is Tom Brady. There's no other superstars in the sport. I'm Are sorry. So so what, so what so what Tim has decided to do is just define superstar in his own way and yeah. decide that he is correct. I just, I just <laughs> not what it believe, actually means. I can't believe of all the sports where you could claim there's only one superstar, you picked the NFL. I mean, you could argue now that basketball is bigger than the NFL in terms sure, of athlete basketball notoriety. Basketball has like three superstars. Oh, yeah, That's three. Three whole superstars <laughs> in the NBA. You could have picked baseball, and at least I would have somewhat yeah. been on your side. Yeah, but you picked you know, have football. You, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll pick the most popular yeah. sport of all in America and say, yeah, there's, cool. there's only one guy people know. That's baseball it. doesn't have any. Like, it's just, just how it works. That's a, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue that point with you, but you picked football to prove your point. Yeah, and there's one. That's a lie. That's it's a straight face lie. Yeah. Like just people who are in like who aren't big sports fans, even sports fans at all, don't know any okay, football. Good. That You're JJ Watt then. They don't know who he, he is. He goes on Ellen. He did his charity things. I guarantee you they do. Yeah, my grandma uh, my yeah. grandma knows all about JJ Watt. Likes JJ. So there. Based on your thing, there. So you're already wrong. So let's uh right. yeah, it's the hot dogs. It's, it's hot gotta dog. be seventy five percent. It's not. Shockingly enough, Subway. I don't Sub- know. yeah. So See, coming in yeah. third place, Sriracha with eighteen percent. I'm vote. so right about that too. You're, like, you're that not right about thing. that. It's a. F- this isn't. This isn't something you can debate. It was invented in 1930. That is an indisputable no, fact. It wasn't popular. It, uh, that it wasn't, wasn't your take. Or chic. It was as if it had been from then because no one had seen. It. I'm sorry. It's a hipster millennial condiment. It's also trash. That is, a, these are just horrible takes. One, you're wrong about the first thing. And two, you think Sriracha's trash. I mean, keep your head a shake, pal. Um, hot dogs, 34% of the vote, which really should be the runaway yeah, winner here, that, but was not. I, Subway, with 47% of the vote, is your champion for worst take, Andrew Custy, factually incorrect. There's just a lot of, like, PME brand loyalty yeah. to that. Like, people who are just very familiar with Tim... <laughs> the subway holds yeah. like a deeper well there's also a, a lot more meaning. there's also a lot more about it with subway like tim had mentioned that he ate raw hot dogs yeah. once and then he really tried not to bring that up again yeah. i guess but i think that makes it even better i think in a way subway it's got diminished returns at this point for me it's almost like when he complains about millennials and just yeah, like, yeah, or yeah, like yeah, the yeah. jet we're saying the jets are good yeah like but when i know. hear i ate raw hot dogs that's that's a moment like wait, wait, wait tim go back say that again and those are the best moments so okay all right we, we ready this is a this might be the best category. I'm not going to lie to you. Worst take, subjectively incorrect for the 2018 Custy Awards. Number one, microwave food. Tim proclaimed freezer to microwave food to be of higher quality than farm to table food. I stand by that. Reclining on airplanes. Tim declared anyone who prefers people not recline on airplanes is, quote, cruel. Cheers. In a discussion with Jake Seeley about the USA Network drama Suits, Tim remarked that this. Cheers improved after Shelley Long left the show. Then he said everyone loved Rebecca, Woody, and Frazier, despite all three characters being negatively received after arriving on the show. Dorito dipping. In response to a question on Twitter, Tim stated he, quote, fully endorsed dipping Doritos in cottage cheese. 
Ugh, that is just God. fucking disgusting, man. Socks and shoes, declaring sock, shoe, sock, shoe <laughs> to be the appropriate way of putting on footwear. Have you amended that take at least? I stand by every one I of these. I forgot things. about that one. Gas stations, saying gas stations have some of the finest food. They do. <laughs> they do. This is so hard. SpaghettiOs, saying <sighs> SpaghettiOs are, quote, an awesome lunch. They all go together. They are. <laughs> so many are the same. The <laughs> white chocolate, not saying not only is white chocolate the best type of chocolate, <sighs> but also that the people agree with him on this. <laughs> They do. They know. Seasons. Tim stating winter is the best season and summer coming in dead fucking last. The only people that have tended to agree with Tim on this one are people that live in Arizona. That's it. Or like the very bottom of Texas down by the border. Anyone who lives in like a real climate, they don't like winter so much, Tim, where like you live in Canada. I've had people reach out to me in DMs. Saying I didn't. I, I'm, sh- yeah, I'm absolutely ashamed. I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> yeah. sure that's not true. It's like when you said that someone came up to you on the bus one time and told you that you weren't cows. <laughs> that happened. No, it didn't. Didn't happen. Oh, <laughs> well, there's more gelato. Oh, man. Tim stated malls to have as good or better gelato than any gelato found in Italy. This. Despite the fact that not only do vendors which sell gelato in Italy have a quicker access to fresh ingredients, have higher standards of quality considering the number of people they intend to serve, gelato makers are experts in their field with refined recipes compared to the novices at mall stands. And Tim has never actually been to Italy, so he has nothing to compare mall gelato to. Jeez. I actually stand by that claim. I think that there's a lot of suppositions going on there. The idea that somebody, just because they're not living in Turin or Venice... Uh, you know, d- doesn't have the capacity to make gelato, doesn't have access to fresh ingredients because they're not accessible here in North America. Like, I, I actually think that's kind of preposterous. Well, I would say that you might have a point on that if you were talking about an actual, like, gelato shop, not yeah. like a mall stand. Well, it's not a stand, it's or, a store in mall. Or if the last point wasn't the biggest cloud hanging over your argument, which is you've never been to Italy and had gelato in Italy, so it doesn't yeah, matter I've what you think. I haven't been to the Louvre either, and I can tell you whether I like the Mona Lisa. This is, that's a picture! <laughs> you can't taste something through a picture! Well, Tim, I mean, clearly by most of these, it's very clear Tim has no taste buds, this is, so this maybe one, it doesn't matter. This one feels like an organism, this entire category, like... 80% of them feel like an organism that's just growing off the other. Maybe. Well, no, no, we got, we got two more here. There's two more nominees. Traveler's checks. Tim was oh. furious over banks doing away with traveler's checks despite declines. Oh, that's in- right. I th- was upset about that. <laughs> it sounds like you're still <laughs> upset about it. That's such garbage. They're gone now. <laughs> despite declines in interest rates and the rise of convenient alternatives, making them near impossible to make a decent profit off of. And just the convenience factor, when you can use your Incredible. credit card in any country in the world. Really, Tim, what's the point? Oh. I want my traveler's checks. <laughs> golf coverage. Tim said he enjoys the break between the golf channel coverage and network coverage. I do. Because he can take a shower in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it and a... it's just a nice break. It's a nice break in the action. It's like a halftime oh. in a football game or, you know, intermission. Except they're game. still they're playing. Still yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Oh. It's a it's half not. hour. And it's not the it's Except not the, the leader's on the fifth hole and he just teed it behind a tree. <laughs> and now we're going to commercial. Uh, for for a half hour. Anything that's important, I will see in the highlight pack as soon as they start the next half hour. I'll see it. It'll he's not okay. even like following. No, like, he, he, has no he has no idea. He has no idea. Last one. Uh, grocery store wings. Tim stated that grocery stores to have the best chicken wings on the planet. And then once freaked out that he showed up too early to get them, they told him it oh, wasn't yeah, lunchtime was yet. He said, when's the lunchtime? Lunchtime is now. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah. that still annoys me now. I hadn't thought about that since it happened. Well, I mean, do you, have you reversed your stance that maybe you shouldn't be walking into a grocery store to get chicken wings at 11 a.m. on a weekday? No, I stand by all that. All right. So there's a lot of good choices here. Oh, there's a clear winner. What's a clear winner? Oh, socks and shoes is the clear I, I will winner. say that number one and number two are separated by one percentage point. Wow. 
Well, these are there's so many. There's they're so, so many, similar. They, they're so similar. Yeah, socks and shoes is so big. I worry that the golf it's contingent so of the fan base could vote God. that because that's like a real I, tipping point. I, I, I will spoil for number me, three. Golf coverage is number three. Yeah, see, I okay. knew that would just gain traction. Just it's also on, a horrendous take. I, they're all horrendous. <laughs> but like socks, shoe, socks, shoe is a level to of me, like my, yeah, psychotic. Okay. I I hope that it's a that the one percent separates the socks, shoe, socks, shoe, and his take on. Uh, on gas station like convenience store food white well, chocolate is also pretty bad yeah they, well there's that's a thing a in thing. this too like is there one food take that stands out because there's like eight food yeah takes in here. They, they might all, all just take away, take from, away each from each like other. the first it's one's like insane like the, the Yankees. microwave one that's insane but you could have such a pathetically boring palate that like a pizza pocket is m- taste better i feel like that's also like something I, I am a super taster <laughs> that's jesus christ <laughs> that's also a forever take like that's a take that tim has brought up yeah, year sure. after year after year whereas the sock shoes thing is specific to this time frame. And again, like if Tim were to kill 20 people tomorrow and everyone was like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And then someone told you, oh, did you know he puts on his shoes and socks, <laughs> sock shoe, sock shoe? You'd be like, oh, this is starting to make a would, little bit more sense. Would it be sense. a dead giveaway? Like for, <laughs> yeah. for, to honestly think that Gat, like, I guess. What's the best thing you can them? buy, Tim, if is the most delicious at the gas station? <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, I was in the pre-show. I was talking about the White Castle frozen sliders that you fire in the microwave. Those are excellent. I mean, uh, look, well, I, I would at least give you. That's a not pass. even like gas station one, food. I know you got just something like, in the freezer that you go to buy. I would say the fried chicken, uh, at the fried chicken in 7-Eleven. That's is not actually even really a gas station, though. Yeah, there yeah, are 7-Eleven. I guess. Yeah, look, but here's the thing: gas if, if Tim grew that. up in like Alabama or Mississippi, where there actually are like. A relatively large contingent of like gas station food. That okay, you're swear by. okay. But he's in he's in Nova Scotia. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. I actually do know a couple hipsters that opened up like a sandwich shop in Beside, it's big like, in the south. In this like in the gas south. station. Ah, they see really that 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 work. sounds like Tim. Tim is so that you're actually in? you're right. I kind of <laughs> no, need to. No, I am not. But I know that he's talking about. Yeah. Like the- and the hot dog, hot dog is not a thing. And I know that he lives in like a normal enough Canadian town where there are like all the mainstream options, let alone like mom and pop places yeah. that are probably also do, delicious. Do you know why he feels this way? I, I know the answer to this. Convenience? It's the closest thing to his house. Yeah, convenience. Okay. I got to go. Yes, I'm with Gary in sock shoes. Sock. Yeah, it's so. Uh, right. yeah. Coming in third, the bronze medalist of subjectively incorrect takes from Tim Andacust. Golf coverage, 11%. Microwave food tasting better than all other foods, 22%. And, of course, the serial killer indicator, shoe sock, or sock shoe, sock shoe, in that order of leaving the house, assuming that you never wear socks inside your house, an impressive 23% yeah, of the yeah. vote. Oh, okay. man. That's good. Yeah, that's that, we got that one right. That was, yeah. As tough <clears> as a category <throat> that was, that did... S- I'd say I think Standard there's box. there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen got, I, there's fourteen even... okay and it got twenty three percent of the vote I think that says something with that that range of options for it to still get basically a quarter that's that's impressive all, all of these essentially mm-hmm. Tim that if you put out a Twitter poll that one way or the other that this would be one of your five percenters all of these. I don't know if I agree with that. The entire card. Yeah. Like, the I, th- th- this card. is basically what it is. 5% might be the highest thing he would get. The cheers is probably the easiest one because most people well, just. Well, the cheers don't... one is just, uh, just factually correct. I mean, Frazier was such a popular character, became one of the best spin offs uh, yeah. in television history. Yeah, but like, that happened. That's, that's, it's, you're, you're basically rewriting history based on what we know now. Like, at the time, they weren't highly received characters. Woody Harrelson, everyone loves Woody Harrelson in that show now because we know who Woody Harrelson is. But at the time, he was not well received. Oh, I see. I don't think that that's just true. People go around saying that that's true. C- I don't actually think Cust, that there's any. C- Cust, as a one year old, remembers this very, very vividly. Oh. I watched a lot of Cheers growing up on TV. Yeah, that's fine, Tim. Of- you watch a lot of things, but you also have the worst idea of what people actually think of anyone anyone's ever met. No, nah, I don't think that's true. I mean, we're going through the entire thing here. All right. Most cuss story of 2018. It's a very category. popular category. Love so, category. Tim, maybe uh, you can regale us when you hear me say I these trigger words. To DC. Is, is that a Diet Coke? <laughs> it had to be. Yes. <laughs> <That's> just- <laughs> 
I was trying to do it subtly so it wouldn't get hurt. Like, I didn't want to go that right in the mouth. You just sh- in the in the mic. That was, like, that was staged. That was yeah, Tim, are you doing this for the for the show That's, now? Yeah, it's Crack gorilla pro- product oh, placement. Is he getting <laughs> spot, like, is he get, like, did he just get three? It's like when Dennis Rodman went to Korea and just had the the Diet Coke like placed on that table the entire time. All right, so Tim, if I tell you the words street magic, oh, fantastic. what do you think of? I think when I outsmarted that street magician. <laughs> okay. So, That's a great way to put it. So here's what happened. Here's the story. Uh, we were in North Carolina in what was the first year I met you at college? Uh, 2010. 10? So in 2010, we went to Charlotte to go watch the first round of the NCAA tournament. Then we went and played some golf in Myrtle Beach afterwards. And the in-between day, there was tournament off day tournament uh, in Charlotte. Uh, we went out to a bar. First of all, when we were inside the bar, I did that thing where you like – hit the top of someone's beer and then it overflows. Sure. I did that to Tim. <laughs> Never had that done before. Instead of putting his mouth over it to suck all the beer, <laughs> he just moved it to the side <laughs> and just let it fall all over the floor. <laughs> and then <laughs> track down one of the waitresses to come clean it up. <laughs> which is I pretty fantastic. what was going on. <laughs> it was pretty fantastic. Then we get outside, and there's a guy doing street magic, card magic, maybe wearing a very handsome jacket. It must be jacket. so fun in public. Oh, it's the best. Oh, he's like now. been... So oh, Tim really gets boozed up, but he was a bit boozed up at this point. There's four of us. We're walking around. We see this handsome fella doing some card tricks, uh, and he's doing you know different things. And you know he's saying, you know, take a card. I'll guess what your card is. And Tim just goes, I don't think that was a regulation shuffle. So the guy just goes, you know what? You shuffle the cards. <laughs> Gave the cards to Tim, shuffled them off, and then pulled cards, Tim's card out immediately in his face. Thus, Tim, you were showed up by the street magician. It was a rigged deck. <laughs> The browser download. Uh, We were trying to get the show going one day, and Tim declared it was impossible to solve an issue he had opening his browser recording the show. And then he eventually realized he just actually had to click the button to make it work. See, I don't think the the explanation does it. It doesn't. It, like it's him because being like it, it's impossible. Yes, he also like railroaded your friends who would help him with a real computer <laughs> issue, not just not knowing how to x um. a browser. Uh, so this was a personal favorite for me. Also, just to be able to hear his voice and his like confidence that that he is um, like power. What's it called? Like set, like every try to problem solve like four things. This is this is almost it for me. I, I think but the next we'll one is on. my favorite. I don't think it's gonna win, but I think it's my favorite. Well, the browser download too. It was almost like Flanders' dad. He's tried nothing. He's all out of, all ideas. Out of ideas. It wouldn't work. You're constantly living your truth. You couldn't even get an update done on your computer. And then you said, it can never be done. <laughs> never fixed. It, never uh, be, I, never, I, it I, can I, never be updated. I, I actually have it all fixed now. Shocker. Do you actually? Yeah, I do. What was the problem? The problem was it was already downloaded automatically. I just had to click the button underneath it to launch it. <laughs> if people so only I just kept knew it down. what was happening 37 minutes ago. Paul, did you record <laughs> any of that beforehand? Oh, excellent. Let's take let's let's take a look at Tim right before we went on air. No, but hopefully we can get this fixed for next week. I've never seen this this never happened with Zoom before. Well, you, next time you see Butts, you get him to help you out with it, okay? No, I, there's nothing. I, I tried to look online about it. And there was nothing. Of course, because it's probably not a real problem. <laughs> it, it, it's disappearing, and you can't. You physically can't. I wish I could send you a video. Let's start. We can't uh, download Zoom. Yeah, we, we, we have to start because Jeff has to go. Probably a shutdown. I, I, I agree, but I think we're going to have to keep doing this from now on because this thing is Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> It'll never work again. Just ask Butts. Well, maybe my computer. Just, 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 maybe add, my just computer can you just box. please ask Butts next time you see him? Nope. Why? Will not. Why? He will be able to fix this for you. No, he can't. He tried to, like, use Bluetooth on my computer. We were over at his place, and he's like, your computer is not Bluetooth accessible for some reason. Are you all right? I'm fine. You don't sound fine. I'm pissed that this f***ing thing doesn't work. So you're now admitting that it, it, it can be done, Tim? I certainly hope if there was any profanity there, it was bleeped out. I will I will go back and bleep out your profanity. What, you were what? very upset about it. <laughs> What's also- well, I was annoyed at... I, I, I knew there was something on my end I was doing that something on my end was wrong and I couldn't figure it out. So now, now I've got it up now. I'm now watching Here's like the I thing. usually do while I'm talking here on the phone. You said you, you unequivocally were beyond confident that a mutual friend would have been able to resolve it in 10 seconds. 
It would have been resolved in two seconds. It wouldn't work. Until you clicked on it. He didn't do it. Yeah, you didn't do what you needed to do. That was the problem. No, there was like an update or something. I didn't realize that there was a button. There. And I quote, butts couldn't fix this. And we fixed it. We fixed it without being able to see what was going on. Be like, did you click on it? No. Why don't you try clicking on it? Oh, it's, it's solved. Next one. And this, yeah, this is maybe one of my personal favorites. Tim, remember when we, oh, th oh this isn't even the, the same one that I thought it was. I thought this is the one about him getting a 200 and, remember when Twitter upped its Twitter? Oh, limit? no, that was oh. that was in the first custody. That's this, what I thought this was. This, no. this is also still a very good one, though. I, I remember this one fondly. Tuesday. So, yeah, Black Tuesday. We went over that in the last custody. So this is a different Twitter one. Uh, I photoshopped a verification check mark uh, to the <laughs> Tim Andercust Twitter account and not oh, yours. Right, that. And, then, and then we tricked you into thinking that it was real. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember reaching out oh, to Gary and yeah, asking yeah. him. <laughs> so the best, the best part of this was it was you photoshopped a picture and then convinced him that when you're verified, you don't, you don't see, see your own blue check mark, <laughs> but everyone else does. <laughs> And I had you messaged me and Butts messaged me saying Tim is going to message you at some point this week and ask you if he's verified. Just say yes. It's like okay. I've heard <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, that one was funny. <laughs> Tee -hee -hee. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Got a snort already. How far are we into the show for the first snort? It sounds so ridiculous when you say it. <laughs> you know what else I say? There's a conspiracy against me. <laughs> proof that there's a conspiracy against me. What, what if I just told you one thing <laughs> that would solve all of oh, this, though, Tim? Man. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 He's choking on his DC. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. There's still three more of these. <laughs> See, this one's this. The next one's probably the one that won. This is Paul's. This has to be Paul's favorite. <laughs> Tim was once frightened by a peacock as a child oh, and refuses to be in the presence of one. I wasn't just frightened by one. I was two years old at a zoo and I let those wild animals run wild at zoos. They don't keep them in the caves, the peacocks. And the peacock walked right up to me and screamed in my ear. Did he go, ah! Yes, it did. Well, that was it. I was scarred for life. Those things are satanic and evil and I hate them. See, this one doesn't do oh. it for me like the others. I think, though, this, like, this leads to such... It's an innocent such... thing to be afraid of an animal, especially... Who remembers what happened to them when they were two years okay, old? I remember what happened to me two days ago. That's fine. I agree with that, and I don't. I find this humorous, but I, I don't yeah, know. Stop I, being a I, coward, I think, Tim. I think that's, that's why this one will end up winning, is that the, the connotation the audience now has with Peacocks and Tim's relationship And the peacocks. direct, like, Twitter content that this one brought. Also, yeah. yeah. Oh, also, since it's been a while since we've actually been through this, if you out there are watching, remember just to tweet gifts of <laughs> peacocks at Tim. Tim yeah, Richard, please don't do that. No, you should definitely do that. Uh, next one. This is actually my personal favorite one. Is that Tim has recently taken up the habit of purchasing scratch tickets repeatedly. It's about the lowest thing you can do, pal. So again, this is mischaracterized. As most things are mischaracterized about me. I bought a few back in the fall or whatever i bought like four out of five days and then i stopped no, and now, now i might what? buy one every other week when was the last time you honestly when was the last time you bought one two weeks ago not this morning no although a friend of ours did buy out all the set for lights from a convenience store last week is he now set for life? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he decided to buy all the set for lives they had. That day. What a he, he tries very hard. He's oh. just trying to get, he's, he's the cam of the people that we know. He's just trying to get rich quick. Uh, last one. Who was here? Oh, Paul, you were there with us. Alexa, when we were watching the Notre Dame. Feinberg you, was with us. Right, Feinberg, you oh, were yeah, there. I was working right. that night, right. Uh, so we, a, we all got together. Tim was this in This was town. the night he cursed Cam Champ. Yeah. At Erdman's. Is it Erdman's, right? Yeah, we were at Erdman's place, and Erdman has Alexa. <laughs> Tim had never been around Alexa before. Uh, oh we, were, we, were watching the, we were watching the game, and he wanted to know the score of another game, and Tim went to go look it up on his phone, and Erdman was like, hey, what's the score of Alexa? And then it just it set it out from behind him, and he looked so terrified. 
Now, on this show, we've once said that Siri is Tim's best friend. It could turn out that Alexa is Tim's best friend if Tim would go down the route of getting Alexa and Google Home. I have never seen one before. I've never seen where it. Do you, used. Where do you live that you've never seen one of these before? And I found it very terrifying that this uh, <laughs> non-sentient machine just knew automatically some information. I wasn't prepared for it. I just didn't expect it. And I felt like this Violated. is... He felt raped. He felt... Like he, this he was is, triggered. He was very like, much triggered. No, I don't know about triggered. Like, Ale- shuck. Ale- Ale- Alexa shuck. is not allowed in Tim's safe space. Like, all the f- fears I have about, like, a dystopian future, like, Big Brother, 1984, and a brave new world, like, Alexa sort of, like, represents that thin end of the wedge for me, where, like, AI becomes too... It just, I saw it, I saw how quickly it answered the question, and I was like, oh, dear God, that is frightening. And yeah, I was, I was, as the kids say, shook. Uh, Alexa's <laughs> bad, it shouldn't exist. You remember this, Jake. Yes, very well. You know what, though? Sort of like how you are with the Peacock. I, In a weird way, I can't necessarily knock anyone in sort of like a 2001 Space Odyssey kind of way for being terrified of Alexa. Yeah, it was like a step away from saying, open the pod bay doors. Well, like based on but, how how entry level he is, yeah, with this technology. it doesn't seem like yeah, something yeah, yeah, he would yeah, but yeah, I don't know that I'm entry level. I think thing. that's a bit. No, there's an actual real term. Like there's a real term. Tim that claims that he's Tim. Not, okay. Tim yeah, claims that he's it. ahead of the pack when it comes to technology. But he also claims he's, he's an early adopter. No, adopter, that's, according that's, to him, that's an egregious claim. <laughs> That's an egregious claim. He's what Garyan's troglodyte. He's a troglodyte. No, Tim. What, how would you describe your skills of technology? I would say middle of the pack. No, not true. I'd say I'm middle of the pack. Like my grandma I I is middle of the pack. Him. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you're yeah. Good. My grandma's good with computers. Well, like, like for being middle of the pack. Yeah. Like she's a real old and like she's she now want to up my iPad. status. But I don't adopt anything early. I know that. All right, so. Each of these, there's one at 21% of the vote, one at 20% of the vote, and one at 19% wow. of the vote. <clears throat> Coming in third place, the browser download, 19% of the vote. With 20% of the vote, coming in second place, the Peacock. Yes. Number one. It's got to be scratch. Right? Most cuss story of the year. Street magic. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's really embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because, like, just, where, just, Tim, where Tim doesn't get drunk very often, he starts walking around with, like, a gimp leg. Like, it's a pretty good walk. He's stumbling up. He's talking shit from behind the pack. And this magician just makes him look ludicrous. I just, Tim, when you're verified, you don't see the check mark. Everyone else does. <laughs> I feel like that was just that, more funny to me, you and us. The three people that was who knew cruel about it. is what it was. You're all against me. <laughs> oh, here's a fun one. Best cuss corner of the year. Cuss Corner 9, which included Bike Lanes, Rotten Tomatoes, Subway Gift Cards, Doug the Pug, Chinese Food versus Thai Food. Cuss Corner 10, the X. Chinese Food versus uh, Thai Oh, that's right, because Thai Food took over from Chinese Food like a couple of years ago, and I was making that point. I forgot about that. And he said that no one eats Chinese food anymore. Well, no, just Thai Food has taken over from Chinese. It's like now the Asian food of choice, it seems. Like when I go to the mall, there's more people at Thai. Yeah, we we, we also Thai. we also went and looked at this, and that was just like you, you know, as you normally do. That's just based on your truth because you saw that in the mall you were in, there were more Thai food stores than Chinese food stores. Therefore, you proclaimed Thai food had passed Chinese. No, food. just there were more people going to Thai Express than the Manchu Walk over and over. <laughs> I noticed this, and that's, that that's and, that's and, all, and, that's, and and that's, that's your basis of Thai food has taken over Chinese food. Well, you're seeing Thai food places all over the place. There's Thai's Express all over the place now. And they're good. I get it. Like, I understand why. Their chicken pad thai and their kung pao beef or whatever the heck it's called, it's really tasty. And you get those little packets of peanuts you can take home with you. Jeff, when you're uh when you and your family are at Christmas time and looking for a snack, you getting Thai food or Chinese food? It's Chinese food. Yeah. 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 Chinese food is still way bigger. Thai food is quite good, though. I will give you that. Thai Express is not what I would have my go-to being for best Thai food. And I like that he's framing this conversation of Chinese food versus Thai food as Manchu Wok versus Thai Express. Yep. Yep. That's really all you need to know. So, Cuss Corner 10, Tiny Homes, oh, Banking, tiny Coffee homes. Shops, Pa... <coughs> Tim's the hack lung. Pa <laughs> Eternity Leave, Gym oh, Habits, God, that. Planes, and Restaurant Reservations. Cuss uh, Corner 11. USGA, oh, this is the all-golf one. Playing in shorts, Tiger Woods, UF Open rules, announcers, and assorted golf graphics. Cuss Corner 12, people being laugh riots on Twitter, chain restaurants, diets. 
That does sound like a good one. <laughs> Cuss Corner 13. Uh, varied debates between Coke, the banning of straws, <laughs> hotel shampoos, and the two-line pass. That one was with Cam. Cuss Corner 14. Uh, his ranking of the seasons, his strategy of an all-you-can-eat buffet, pumping fuel, and barbecue rankings. Cuss Corner 15. Milk before cereal. How did that not make worse subjectively incorrect takes? Yeah, that's pretty bad. There are quite a few people who agree. For example, Jake Seeley is 100% on my side with that. Also, Oreos and orange juice definitely should have made it. <laughs> yeah, so we got we have milk before cereal, Cuss saves the movies, standing desks, the best TV episodes of the century, balloon bands, Oreos and orange juice, and edible cutlery. Cuss Corner 16. Optimal Christmas weather. Oh, this is the one that we did. Yeah. Uh, a real custy Christmas. This, this was Best great. gifts, the reality of Santa, Rudolph, millennial gifts, and the rankings of the 12 days of Christmas. Tim, do you remember what was number one on your 12 days of Christmas rankings? You cut it doesn't off. matter what your 12 days of Christmas rankings that one was are, so pal. Cool. So I had spent two and a half to three put him on. <laughs> put him on mute, please. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> what do you think will end up being, Garyan, the best cuss corner? Oh. Okay, so I know we've said this a lot, but <laughs> I, I think the the golf centric one is going to have a lot of people just remembering. Didn't it fondly. make the list. Didn't make the list. Okay, didn't make the list. I would say my two favorite. There's, just there's one that has twenty six percent of the. Okay, my my two favorites just based upon like the you mini segments within them? them. Well, the ones I remember. <laughs> uh, I loved Tiny Homes, um, and I and and the the twelve days of Christmas ranking was. Very, very high for me in moments on Cuss Corner. A very so, custy Christmas? Yeah. I, I like that one a lot. Jeff, which one? I don't even remember which ones you were on. Gary and was I. I remember the one Cam was on. I like the uh, seasonal rankings and the barbecue and pumping fuel. But I don't know that first one. The Chinese versus Thai bike lanes. His take on rotten tomatoes or lack thereof. Also, Doug the Pug's entry into the lexicon. Yeah. Seems like a I'm going to take that one. All right, number three on the list. The bronze medalist was Cuss Corner 16, the very Custy Christmas. Cuss Corner 12 was next when we did the chain restaurant rankings uh, and Tim talking about different diets like the keto diet. Uh, and we talked about intermittent fasting and people being, Tim, do you, are people still laugh riots on Twitter to you? I have basically, not basically, I have forsworn that insult uh, on Twitter. I haven't seen it in forever. No, but people you said, used to attack me and say nasty things and every once and again i would go on there and i would uh, make note of their paltry twitter account and say oh you must be a laugh right no wonder you only you have 75 whole followers oh we remember yeah, we, we remember we, we what remember this was, what we, we this told was. you to stop doing because it, it made you look like an asshole <laughs> and i for i swore it off and haven't done it in probably a year <laughs> and don't intend to do it again cuss corner 15 is the winner milk before cereal cuss saves the movies standing desks Best TV episodes of the century: The Balloon Band, Oreos and Orange Juice, and Edible Cutlery. Who was on that one? Was have, that me? Have you? I think that was you. I think I was on that one. Yeah. Tim, are you, have you turned around on Edible Cutlery yet? I think I was against it then. I'm sure I'm against it now. I actually don't remember that part. There's so many things, right? It's hard to remember all of it. So when I listed off all of those things, what was the most triggering thing for you? You know what it was. You already cut me off about it earlier. <laughs> Doug the pug. No, the Christmas no, thing. Those Christmas rankings. Three days of my Please. life wasted. Mute him. No one cares. <laughs> All right. Oh, and now we're getting to the good ones. These are the one, two, three, four, five. We got six of them here. Six, six big categories. Biggest cussed rival. Oh. Who is the biggest cussed <laughs> rival in the world? So I want to dispute. I don't have any rivals. I'm unrivaled. <laughs> okay. I'm unrivaled. I just, <laughs> Very good. If I did I'm have most rivals. No one is more unrivaled than me, right, Tim? I just don't think I have any rivals. I think, uh, you know, I'm a pretty easygoing, relatively zen guy, and I don't actually have rivals. <laughs> I, I, I will say before we start this, I can't even pick out who I think is going to win this category because they're all just too perfect. Well, I feel I, like there's a pretty clear winner. Okay. <laughs> okay. You don't think so? I, I know who I think is going to win, but some of, these, some of these rivalries have gone back longer than the right. existence of Cuss Corner. So. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, biggest cuss rival, Doug the Pug, New York Times best-selling author who is also a pug who makes humorous tweets, posts, and is the king of pop culture. Yeah, well, when you're like Millennials. number 90th on the rankings, you get, you get to call yourself a New York Times bestseller, given that you know there's only so many books about dog. Anyway, sorry, continue. 
Millennials, any person born between 1981 and 1996, are referred to as irresponsible and decadent. Except They're for bankrupting appar- themselves on except, Instagram. Ex- except for apparently Tim. Tim also thought that you have to buy filters on Instagram, <laughs> yep. and that's how people were going broke. But they are going broke from Instagram. You read yes, a story for, about for the one dinners person. and vacations, not for the dollar freaking filters they're buying. They, you can't even buy a filter on Instagram. They need to do like your buddy does on Twitter. Take a picture with a jacket that he doesn't own and then put it back on the rack. <laughs> that, that, that's a real blow. No one knows yeah. about that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I, th- I believe that is uh, actually gone now, that photo. But there was a photo of someone out there on Twitter uh, of them in a nice suit jacket with, you could still see the tag on it. So they walked into <laughs> A you Brooks Brothers racks put, up, put on a suit. Behind him. What's that? You can see the racks of jackets behind oh, him. That's fantastic. The best. <laughs> He's dying over there. Uh, So anyway, the one story that Tim is pointing to about people going broke by Instagram is about a girl who tried to live the lifestyle of moving to New York City. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, trying to keep up with the Joneses on Instagram, going to these fancy things, and trying to get as big of a following as possible to like start doing advertising. And then then your credit card bill comes. Yeah, but Tim didn't read the rest of the story, because the rest of the story is she had to pay off like 10K over two years, which she moved out of the city. She did, but then she ended up with like 40,000 Instagram followers. Now she just makes money off Instagram. The headline was millennials are going are going. Well, broke. I'm yeah. sorry, Tim. You can't just get all your information from headlines. It's the same as like millennials don't have money anymore because they go on $400 a date evenings every it's, month. Look, it, it's not ironic. What are you talking it's, about? It's not ironic well, because that article you... said that the millennials don't go on dates anymore because they're quote too expensive. Look, it's not. It's not ironic because you are a millennial. But one of the things you would say millennials do, and one of the one of the biggest sort of like just massive lies about millennials is oh they only ever read the heart the art the uh, headlines of articles they never get in the nitty-gritty you are that person you are such a millennial that you think millennials are it's insane he, he is factually a millennial he yes. is yeah like, tim is just a real so he, there's he's a sell he's basically a hipster is essentially what I'm he is. not a hipster you kind of are with these like ludicrous takes you're it just seems like you're being contrarian for the sake of being contrarian this is what hipsters are you're a millennial are you gonna claim that you're not I certainly don't participate in millennial culture. You do. You're the biggest hipster of everyone in this on this show <laughs> right now. Oh, that's not even close to true. I don't wear fake glasses like you do or pretentious fake earrings like you do. Well, they're not fake. They're just fake diamonds. They're not fake. Yeah, that's they're, they're, not, they're not drawn on earrings. No, they're not clip-ons. No. No. I actually do have my ears pierced. I should go. I should. Paul, I think my earrings are behind you. If you see them, put them in for the next part of the show. Uh, Hillary Clinton, <laughs> Democratic candidate. In 2016, for the presidential election, should really be the Clintons in general. I yeah, think. you're 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 odd. You're out on the Clintons. They're big rivals of yours. Dude. <laughs> I do not like the Clintons. No, they're they're bad people. I'm glad that they're out of our political life. Uh, some would argue that they're are not, they? but we'll see. Are they? <laughs> Ian Woosnam, known as quote the wee Welshman, a part uh. of the Big Five golfers. <laughs> the worst, blaming his poor caddy for his own idiocy at the British Open for having too many clubs in his bag. At that point, he became persona non grata. <laughs> what year was that? 2001. <laughs> I just like I remember how. remember being on my couch watching that round. It was the third round. It was a Saturday. And Woosnam had too many clubs in his bag. And he was like, they started yelling and screaming because he had to take the penalty strokes for it, blaming his caddy for it as if, he's, as if the buck doesn't stop with him. Like, oh, yeah, this is a real... Uh, this is a real class act. I'm done with him. It's, yeah, it's incredible on. to me, though, that you were dead set five minutes ago that you had no rivals. <laughs> and as soon as we bring up any of these names, you can't oh. wait to talk about how much you hate that person. There's, They're, they're going to keep coming. Yeah. Uh, number four uh, for Cus' biggest rival. The coin. The coin. The third, oh, well, member the, a, the third member of the <laughs> NFL picks team. No, right, now that's the part that annoys me. Known <laughs> for its accuracy and brevity. <laughs> I think it's like right here. Oh, man. Oh, the coin is gone. Tim. <laughs> that's a shame. Tim, do you prefer oh, no. the coin or the hat? Oh, the hat was unpretentious. You had a pretty good rivalry with the hat, too. It was pretty the, spark- I, like I would say the hat, hat was pretty potential. I would actually. say the hat was your biggest rival, if anyone was. To be fair, yeah. Jeff used yeah. to yell at the coin, too, because, quote, it doesn't watch the game. <laughs> yeah, it's unfair. It's so hard. <laughs> like, the, like, the coin would pick against the Chargers, and Jeff would be annoyed. No, no, like, no. It wasn't those. The, well, the coin I would make those, won. like, hard picks where, like, oh, that team sucks, and they're only getting three points. Like, no one who watches the would game that. Yep. would, like, want to go to the window with that. Yeah, talking to the mic. Brevity. 
That's your biggest rival. Talking into the mic. That's that's true. <laughs> Next one. Cam or my Newton. headspace. NFL quarterback, frequent activist, <laughs> making charitable donations and spending time with the underprivileged. Tim thinks he's a phony and hates his guts. He's just so jealous I, I of his hat think, game. I don't think that Cam belongs on this list because I... You, all you ever do is just rail against Cam. You hate Cam Newton. You know what? No, I rail about a couple particular things when yeah. you egg me on to do it. I I, I really don't have a big beef with him. Truth other is, than I think, yeah. he, at least in, in years past, he used to pretend things that weren't true. He can't be on this list anymore because he's not even his biggest rival quarterback, and you'll yeah. get there. This is true. Like, he's almost, he can't even top win that category, <laughs> yeah. so how can he win like, this I category? I think Cam Newton could very well be NFL MVP. This now he's just trying to ruin. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to end yeah, it. This is subterfuge. Uh, New England Patriots, the most successful NFL franchise of oh. the century, whose success is discredited by Tim as being garnered by simply, quote, luck. Well, it, a lot of it, if D Ford's left hand isn't one inch offside away from the play, the game is over and the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl. Like, if uh, the ball doesn't bounce off of Edelman's head and arm and leg and fl- freakishly roll into his arms, they don't, like, it is by luck. The I get it. Bad rule. What do you they get? It no, no, no. he's crazy, no but sense. the luck goes both ways. Like helmet catch. Yeah, helmet Tyree catch. caught like they yeah. like you know. I get it. There were some crazy things. The tuck rule. The Seahawks at the, the goal Chinese line. Defense have been killing them all game. But but I'm just saying, like you know, water finds its level yeah. a little. When you're looking for the stuff, sports. you can find like, it. Yeah. If you want, do you really think Jeff? If we weigh on both sides of the no, scale, no, it's not level. Dollar, but but. But it's still like in the contest of of the game, and they do it all the time. I, I just like that, but the, the only reason that they've been so good is because of luck. Yeah, That's no, it. No, it's not the only reason. That oh, so now, so now you're changing your stance. But I'm, is it is it a significant factor? Yes, and of course, Patriots fans refuse, and actually, a lot of football analysts refuse to admit that luck plays a significant role. They like to, they just they didn't win the one Super Bowl. If they just beat yeah. the Rams, but like as a 10 point underdog and we never saw Brady again and he was like a five and 11 quarterback and played for three different teams, then like, oh, we could look back at that like season of 9 11 and they're the Patriots. And like, oh, uh, uh. but no, we're still freaking here and they're still winning. Yeah. And the thing is, oh. too, like, you can't and- win 17 coin flips in a row and be lucky, man. The coin and t- yet they continue the co- to. <laughs> well, do you think it might have something to do with you picking against them and calling it over for them this year? Every single year? No, I, I don't believe that I have magical cursing power. Well, I think this sh- I, the fact that this show exists, yes, I think, should lead you to believe that you do. No, the, that, that team is a good team, and has, but has had more success than it has a right to have had, given the teams they had and the circumstances they were in. Uh, you know, they went to the blackjack table and won at a 65% clip. Uh, which is is just not fair. Baker Mayfield. Oh God! Rookie. I don't quarter. know why he's considered a rival. He's not going to be in the. By the time people watch the next year's show, he will cr- <laughs> maybe very well crashed out. Like I don't know why we're even like dating this. That this is supposed to be an evergreen show. Like what other fad would you like to discuss? <laughs> Rookie quarterback, so savior of the Browns franchise, savior. number nine savior quarterback, as ranked ever. by Pro Football Focus, has savior. too much swag for Tim to handle. Yeah, savior. He played so well last year. They went. They had a losing record and missed the playoffs. Yeah, beat the Jets. Yeah, be, beat the Jets. He came in and beat the Jets in his first game. And you just said about the Jets. That, you know, Sam Darnold. He got hurt. That's why he wasn't any good. I didn't say he wasn't any good. I well, said he wasn't Jets. any good. He wasn't as good as Baker Mayfield. In the last four games of the season, he was actually better. <laughs> well, if we're going to the last four I games. Tim, let's not worry about the sense. entire season. Uh, the last one. The truth. What actually happens in the world runs contrary to what oh. Tim pretends he exists in. They're all I don't so agree good. with that. I mean, I mean, you live your truth. That's what you no, do. No, I don't. You do. I mean, l- listen, do you not really think you live your truth? I mean, it's another millennial thing that you do. No, I don't do anything like that. Well, I could picture Tim, you know, back in the day as like a 12-year-old boy. You mean when he was Thurman Merman and big, like, bad like Santa? just you know That's not banging funny. that banging the table for Bob Dole to take home the election, but like it Bob has Dole. to be the Patriots. Really? Oh, really? That's where you went with that? Look, yeah. It's the thing he he hates so deeply and so widely. He still like will on the summer's day like he there is always, one he does one ant. There is one tear here. 
See, has I feel like thirty-eight percent of the vote. I just yeah, feel it's like probably the, Doug the Pop. It is Doug. The yes, Pop. but I will vote for the Patriots because Tim will take nothing and use it as an excuse to like tweet something negative about the Patriots. He well, yeah, I mean, just he recently, only, hold on, hold on. He only does that about Doug when someone like brings Doug to him. He yeah. will of his own. Oh no, 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 no. He he's really curbed his. Doug, but, but, but he uh, Doug will, public uh, appearance he will in not private, even have very be, upset. He will not even have to be pressed, and he will, like, like celebrate an anniversary of the day the Do- the Patriots lost, like, the game to the Dolphins last year. Like, that, like, like, like he will, like, 9, happy 19, at, 2018. Like, he will, like, celebrate that as an anniversary, like, as a j- joyous occasion, yeah. even though they still won the Super Bowl and have all of them. <laughs> well, just this week, you had people freaking out about Josh Gordon being reinstated. Like a I thought so you said you were going to date the fucking show, you asshole. No a player so important to their success that without him, they beat three better teams than them in the playoffs and won the Super Bowl. He's really important. I again, I would just say that the truth was second place. The truth is so all encompassing of every one of these things <laughs> that that could easily just be. Yeah, there. but it's a cop out answer. Yeah. No one wanted to. Yeah, you, no one wanted to vote for that. Yeah, okay. no, people Coming are going to vote third, for Doug the with twelve percent of the vote. Baker Mayfield. Millennials are second, right? Baker. No, millennials really? not on the list. Doug wow. the Pug in first place with thirty eight percent of the vote. The truth. Oh, Number wow. fifty or fifteen percent of the vote. Tim, people think you live your truth. Well, I mean, I don't think I have a rival, but if I were forced to vote, the Patriots would unquestionably be yeah. that. Vote. See, that's where I was going. Yes, yeah, so I think he's just saying that right now. No, well, no, no. no, no. Thing and it's amazing. like that 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 rivalry with the Patriots is as long. I, I don't as... think he, I don't think you understand how much he hates Doug the Puck. I no he's no. Cute I have nightmares and the actual the Patriots. Yeah, but at least once a month, <laughs> sometimes once a week, I will yeah. have like straight up nightmares about them winning. I I, I despise. That team. Hey Tim, you know what else? Hey, remember the time Marlon McCree fumbled the ball after the interception? I was waiting for that to come up. All yes, right. I ne- do. Ne- oh, next God. category, top. They are lucky. We have the top custradiction of 2018. Nominee oh. number one, 538. After five, uh, after a 538 article which stated that there are no good or bad drafting teams, Tim stated that this means draft picks should be devalued. However, he recoiled when the site used the same model to show that Super Bowl winning teams did not draft, draft running backs highly, saying it was not a reliable source. <laughs> Honestly, I have no recollection of that. If the, I it's, it didn't happen, but I've sent like... 50,000 tweets. So if that happened, it happened, but I don't remember it. Well, I think I feel like this is a cousin with we always deal with when he talks about like, well, the Patriots by DVOA aren't very good. It's like, well, the Jets aren't very good by DVOA. Yeah, but they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I think that you're putting that a little more baldly than I usually uh, do. You guys have both been on the show when Tim has made these points. Loves DVOA. When it until w- it until it doesn't serve his purposes. <laughs> then, it, then it's not reliable whatsoever. It's fake news. Uh, the spy who loved me. In response to a question asking people to respond with a movie they watch most often but know is not good, Tim listed The Spy Who Loves Me. However, he later called the film near perfect as a Bond movie and one of the best films ever made. Yeah, that was stupid of me to say because that is a great movie. I don't know why I would have said that. That was foolish. I recant. Uh, That is, after Goldfinger, perhaps the best Bond movie. Uh, It certainly... It's not Roger true. Moore at the it's, height of his power. You've already, okay, can you lay yeah, off Roger yeah. Moore? We don't need Roger Come Moore's on. son dying. You've already Come killed on. the man himself. Really, it, excavate his body it's or something. It's him at the height of his powers. It is was, the second best Bond song. I like everything about that movie what, is phenomenal. Was Roger Moore the movie. most Andrew Kerr's person of last year after Tim killed him? Uh, Murderer. Yeah. Might have been. I would think so. But you you may not guy, have meant right? to do it, Tim, but you're a murderer. You mean John B. Anderson? Yeah, John B. Anderson. <laughs> man was in his 90s. I can't be blamed. Uh, the killing machine. All right, next one. The NFL draft. Numerous times throughout the NFL draft, Tim started proclaiming things that he later took the opposite stance of after the results of the draft. These things including saying Sam Darnold as the number one quarterback that he did not want the Jets to select. And then after the selection saying Darnold was the best quarterback in the division that year, despite Josh Allen also being in the division and Tim stating his preference for him at the draft. And also originally disliking Baker Mayfield, then flipping to the other side when he thought the Jets were going to get him, calling him Broadway Baker or Baker and the Jets, and then upon Cleveland selecting him, remarking that they sa- that it saved the Jets from taking the worst quarterback who to ever come out in the draft. This 
for me, I, like when I we do a 10th anniversary Custies, yep. <laughs> this is like a forever yep. cust. Because again, like like the reason I think I picked the Capitals on the other one, like as a sports guy, I know Tim is when you own one of those picks and your team is like staring at quarterbacks, you do like you're paying attention to it. And he was so adamant about his preference. And, and for him to say the things he says today or since the draft that completely contradicts everything he said in leading up to the draft, um, we will never forget. We yep. will always hold it against against him. I mean, really, against him, how he ordered those quarterbacks. And in ten years, maybe he'll be right, maybe he'll be wrong. But we will hold him to that pre-draft ranking. I think the entirety of like it, it goes across two separate categories here. We'll get to the other category in a second. <laughs> But his entire bungling that winter of the Jets quarterback situation <laughs> is one of my favorite things of all time. And, and much like how when we think of the Sanchez, I mean, obviously there's the butt fumble. That's the iconic play in Mark Sanchez's career. But there's also obviously the Rex Ryan tattoo and just his love and his proclamation <laughs> that Mark Sanchez was going to be the guy. This is Tim's Rex Ryan tattoo. <laughs> this is the thing I will always think about where it was just like, Broadway Baker is amazing. He was Broadway Baker until the Browns fell again, in love with yes, Baker this Mayfield. This happens for week-long spans, which leads perfectly into the next category. <laughs> so, the final top cuss prediction of 2018. <laughs> my favorite by far. This is the best one ever. When Kirk Cousins appeared like he may be on his way to the Jets. I never wanted him anyway. Tim was all in on the Jets acquiring him. These include <sighs> ranking him as the number nine overall quarterback in football, saying the Jets should cut him, quote, a blank check, saying he doesn't care if the Jets offer $60 million guaranteed. He wants Kirk Cousins, along with numerous other things supporting the Jets making the move. However... After nothing changed besides Kirk Cousins signing with Minnesota, remarking things such as Kirk Cousins and Teddy Bridgewater have each started one playoff game. And then Teddy got hurt, and he's all better now. People think Kirk, Kirk is worth that money? Nope. Quote, Jets knew. <laughs> <laughs> He also stated for the past couple of weeks that he had to come to accept that Kirk would go to Minnesota despite a few days earlier, Kurt is going to be a jet. Deal with it, as he was telling people. He also stated to choose that he also stated to choose that Kirk chose, quote, not to win by going to Minnesota, <laughs> despite the Vikings ranking around the top five in the majority of power rankings heading into the season and the Jets. The and the Jets often re being ranked last. That's not the point. <clears throat> Love it. Yeah. So what's number one? Yeah. See, no, I've really got really to really. Uh, oh. the cousin stuff is amazing, but the, the the draft thing and how he can rewrite history or his opinions of you, it. You mean how he can live his truth? Yes. I change my opinions when the facts change. <laughs> is is really how I want it. Um, Again, just that that eight week long stretch where both these things happened. They're so similar. I think I think cousins will win just because it's thrown in his face the most. See, I think that I picked the draft because it also ties into the Baker and his current like hatred for Baker sort of at the yeah. forefront with his takes of like he won't even be in the league when he adamant like in a year when he adamantly like wanted Broadway this guy. Baker. He wanted this guy. And I can relate. But Baker and the Jets. He's like, doing that. The football I fan. I was making the best of a bad situation. The football fan in me can relate to what it would be like mm, to yeah. to play that game all winter long. Um, when you had such a QB heavy Especially draft. Especially when you thought for a week you were just going to draft or just sign Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Cousins. <laughs> and wouldn't have to think about drafting a quarterback. Tim based his scenario of that situation off that movie, Blank Check, which he also really enjoys. Kind of look like the Love kid in that, that too, if you wore a backwards hat every now and again. The winner, actually third place, with 4% of the vote, The Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah. With 38% of the vote, The NFL Draft. With 55% of the vote, Kirk yeah. Cousins is the biggest custodiction of two thousand. I think you're right, though. I think, I think in 10 years, if we were to do that poll again, draft would win by I, a I feel slide, if we do the poll again, those two things get merged into one. Yeah. At yeah, that, that Jets, when we, when we collectively Jets remember quarterback it. carousel, yeah. yeah. Oh, best Photoshop. This is going to be a tough one to try to articulate here. I, I have all the uh, the pictures up here for you good people. 
You guys can look at them. Uh, if you just take a look at them and go through, <laughs> do you have any one that stands out? Because there's all there's like 17 of them, and they're all kind of amazing. I'll post it on a separate link. I was wondering if, why this booklet was so thick. <laughs> if you hit the description, just look at all these uh, pictures here and pick which one you think would be the biggest one. I love Cuss Cooks. It didn't make the top three. Yeah. But him as the Weber Cooks guy. But I feel like not enough hand people hand. know the Weber Cooks guy, even if they watch this show. <laughs> it's Tim's hero. He cooks in a microwave. Um, I will say... Tim, out of all the ones that I constantly tweet out to you, uh, featuring you in them, which one is your favorite? Well, I don't like any of them. <laughs> I think me on that scooter annoys me the most. So that's the most triggering of all the photos? I wouldn't say triggering. I think that's the one that annoys me. Uh, so we got some good titles here. We have Survivor Cust, with him on Survivor, where he's complaining that there is no microwave. The Wizard of Cust, where he is the cowardly lion as a peacock cussed cooks we got fitzpatrick cussed when he dressed up as conor mcgregor that's pretty great p cussed hall monitor i think cussed. hall monitor cussed is the i mo- also like, hate that one as i was gonna say as a meme hall monitor cussed comes in the most <laughs> handy because anytime tim is being like a little too <laughs> serious about anything you can use hall monitor cussed and it's Scooter great uh, there's three men in a custody with the three of us in it uh. cussed his selfie and him a cautionary tale of selfies cussed reclining on the airplane cussed in the scooter ikra cussed cussed in flacco cussed in alexa oh uh the scarface as cussed the good cursor there's so many good ones. People, and let's get some more the, on the go. The loyal if, Darnold bombs are also very. The, the good. loyal Darnold is funny. I'll yeah. give that person credit. That one actually is funny. How Thurman, about Th- yeah. Thurman Custon? That's on there. The ten. No, I don't appreciate that one. Ten Lords of Custon. Phil C- <laughs> Phil Custelson. <laughs> uh, and then Chili's as the Colin Kaepernick never settle for the actual truth when you can live your own truth. Chili's. <laughs> How did not? Okay, I'm not sure if that was a, enough of a story. But I really think one of most cussed stories of the year should have been when he was trying to figure out how to take a <laughs> selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Which resulted in that, that picture. I won that. Instead of getting Tim to pay me back all the bets he <laughs> lost to me two years ago, in exchange for all the money, he just had to give me that picture for whatever reason. Was still Why was that still saved on your phone? <laughs> he does how to delete. Do you know how to delete? Do you know how to delete photos Have you deleted anything? Any pictures? I mm. do know how to delete photographs, but I don't oh. like go through and curate them. Oh, God. oh man. <clears throat> yeah. So what do you think the winner is? I like the Darnold bombs and Thurman. Custom I mean, the one personally. I hate the most is not there. It's the GIF that you guys keep using. Of the GIF? Yeah, it's, it's, it's GIF. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not. From the uh, NFL experience that you keep using. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one too. Yeah, that's not really a photo. Uh, it's more of a picture. I'm so, going to say uh, the, com- hall, the hall monitor. Coming in number three oh. with 12% of the vote, cussed on a scooter. That's a good one. That's I like how, that's that That's how one. he gets around the mall. He's not even mall walking anymore. Like he's mall well, plus, he's wearing the fireman Ed hat in it, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Gets it's, got, it's got levels. It's actually post, Postman Ted. It's not that. Postmaster Ted. That, that's his name. Uh Tim as Ryan Fitzpatrick as Conor McGregor, 14% yeah, of the that's vote. That's a good one. And number one with 15% of the vote. I think it's all our favorites. The, lo- the loyal Darnold bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one, one is that's very clever. One. There's so much more to that picture, too. Like the description on it is fantastic. Oh, yeah. No, it's the it's reviews. Very intelligent. All right. We got two left. Or two left here, Tim. Ready? Okay. Who is the real king of pop culture? No, oh, well, if it's anybody but me, this is a rigged poll. Nominee number one, Doug the Pug, who makes humorous puns, is a pizza lover, and is declared officially by Twitter and Instagram and a best-selling New York Times novel, The King of Pop Culture. Seems, seems pretty legit. Any of those things. Checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, really. it's, admit. it's a pretty good resume. Gotta I agree. Uh, yeah. The second nominee, Gary and Thorne, freelance sports writer known for his, quote, well-reasoned and mild takes. Uh, I've yeah, never... that's, what, that's what the popular culture is all about, you see. Is, uh, I did, look, Tim, I didn't, nomi- I didn't nominate myself. I, uh, I just the people. See, that's, that's the entire thing. I'm just saying, Tim whatever, falls, whatever Tim falls into the is. trap of giving himself nicknames, oh. which he thinks stick. He's that it, guy. It's, honestly, I said this so many times over the years. The self-proclaiming a nickname is, is oh, one of the lower the forms. That is bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Uh, nominee number three is the king of pop culture. The coin, the winner of the NFL spread picks pool for the season, has competed objectively in the picks very well, Tim. Number four nominee, Tim Butts, our friend. The Tim, the people have actually chosen as their tribune. That's just <laughs> foolish. Fact. Uh, Tim Andercust, cursor, 
insane person, Doctor of Cust. That person does not exist. I mean, um, and the final nominee, Tim Anderson, alias that Tim Andercust often goes by. <laughs> yeah, you guys are all a laugh riot. <laughs> so, who do you think wins this? Uh, well, it's got to be Doug. Yeah, Doug. Didn't he win an earlier. D- 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 Doug gets thirty-five percent of the vote. He is the true yeah. king of pop culture. So, Tim, the people have spoken. You now need to proclaim Doug the Pug the true king of pop culture. No. 35% is, you know, not a bare plurality. Well, what did, what I, did Tim Anderson get as the vote? Uh, Tim Anderson actually got less than 1% of the vote. <laughs> Tim Butts actually scored higher. Tim Andercast scored higher as well. Nice. Uh, coming in second place with 17% of the vote, Tim, the coin. Yep. People love the coin. Yeah, and number the three, coin is just an inanimate object. in the studio house. with us with 16% of the vote, Gary and Thorne as the real king of pop culture over you tim would you like to congratulate garyan garyan is the whiz nobody beats him well doug the pug and the coin beat me to be if we're being factual i know you don't like being factual or not living your own truth but yeah he doesn't want to hear about the truth yeah. he wants to hear about his truth all right we're here we're, we're to the best picture now the final category of the second annual custody award the most Andercursed thing of the year. And there's a lot of these. So, Tim, I might even get your reactions and we'll go round table on this one here as we go through the nominees, okay? Okay, although I'm surprised the biggest thing from 2018 that I was involved in didn't make the show. But what, what well, was we're, that? Not, we're not done yet. Yeah, we're, we're, it was, my, was my interview at the Super Bowl with Louie Anderson. That's what you think the biggest thing of 2018 was? Uh, for me on the show, people always tell me how much they liked that segment. It was it was a really good segment, but that's the thing. That's this isn't about your success. My God, Eastside Mario says a buy one take one home deal. On I'm it. trying to. I'm oh, sorry. I'm trying to find my, um, my direct message from Tim that directly correlates with one of these where he's bragging to me. Um, oh, we're, well, it'll, it. we're probably going to take a while to get there. So right. no, it's Go actually ahead. the very first one. Oh, yeah. is it? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll save that one for last then. Or we'll say I'll put that in the middle somewhere. Number one, Edmonton Oilers were predicted by Tim to win the Stanley Cup. Instead, stumbled to a record of 36, 40, and 6, and missed the playoffs. Man, imagine getting off the Capitals to get on <laughs> the Edmonton Oilers. They had the best player in the league, and they had made the playoffs oh, the year previous. Man. I thought they, were dead, they had made that step forward, and they were due. They, they're still a last place team. Yeah, but they it, had it, made the playoffs that pre- season previous. They actually made the second round. So like I thought they were beginning to to round into form, but I was mistaken. Christian Hackenberg, a.k.a. Christian oh, Hackencast, was selected by the New York Jets in the second round of the 2016 NFL Draft. Tim then proclaimed him to be the future of the franchise, despite numerous reports of his incompetence. Hackenberg is still yet to throw an NFL pass in a game and went from being a second-round pick in the NFL Draft to being selected in the second round of the inaugural Alliance of American Football Draft, which no longer exists, and was pulled after starting one game in that. <sighs> Did he not play? He played, and then he got yanked because he was terrible. But he never threw a pass in the NFL. So, I, I, if anything, that just it's an incomplete. <laughs> so that's, that's how you're. That's, that's how you're choosing that's to spin this. So is my NFL resume. Yeah. Then. Yeah. It's like trying to divide one of the by bates. zero. Like there's just no answer. So is my NFL career. Oh, we could grade man. it incomplete. <laughs> that. Oh my God, that take is so fire. <laughs> that's <laughs> next one. <laughs> The Philadelphia Flyers. While they were winning 4-2 against the Pittsburgh Penguins, Tim declared, oh, quote, that. it's the year of the city of brotherly love on Twitter. This was directly followed by a 6-1 to Penguins run, leading them to win the game and the series. I totally forgot about that. I Oh, I totally forgot about that, but I remember it now. People were not pleased with me <laughs> on the Twitters. The oh. Milwaukee Bucks. After beating the Celtics in game four, Tim declared that the Bucks in six would be a, quote, just outcome on Twitter. The Bucks proceeded to lose game five and the series. I don't remember that, but that sounds right. So that would be that would be the non-Kyrie Irving Celtics. Yeah, correct? this is two, this is yeah. two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Tony Finau. <clears throat> after Tim declared how great the par three contest was oh, at no. the Masters, moments later, Tony Finau injured his <laughs> ankle, causing him to almost miss the tournament. Remember that now. That was, that was within like 10 minutes. Yeah, it did play great. Whew. 
Steve Wilkes, a.k.a. Steve Wilkos, the bouncer for the Jerry Springer show. Tim stated that he did not foresee the Arizona Cardinals relieving head coach Steve Wilkes of his duties. The day after this claim, ESPN reported that Wilkes would not be retained for the next season. I still think that's BS. The guy had one season. Uh, it, it, it's like it's impossible. BS like you don't think that actually happened? Oh, no, it obviously did happen. It was obviously a terrible decision to bring in a a head coach who has absolutely a proven track record of not being good at his job. Uh, the Kingsbury of pop culture. Like just click. There's no reason to believe based on the evidence that Kingsbury is any good. So why you would fire a guy who only got one. Because we, we had evidence that, that that's the bouncer here. He was terrible. They had to get rid of him. Anyone's better. Can I, can I say got, though, before we get to the next category, I personally feel like this shouldn't even be on the list. This should be disqualified. I, I agree. Cause this is such a blatant, attempt by tim and it worked this time but it's such an obvious uh, attempt by i will tim throw to it out we powers. won't even mention it okay skip it oh <laughs> this this is a good one because this one work happened again this year yeah, jarek mckinnon tim declared jarek mckinnon to be a top five running back in fantasy football for the 2018 season mckinnon was injured two weeks later and never recorded a point during the fantasy season that's, tim, an, inc- that's an incomplete we don't know tim, tim then doubled down on that take this year after jarek was back and then he got immediately put on the pup list the next day he is ruining poor jarek's career i think he's a good back whenever he's back and healthy he's gonna tear it up fuck man give the guy a fucking break I mean, he did this. He does this to a running back usually, like at least every now year. He's just every pick, other now he's year. just picking on poor Jarek, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tim declared the Steelers quote couldn't lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Saxonville, Tim, in the divisional round of the playoffs, despite beating them handily earlier in the year. The Jags proceeded to defeat the Steelers 45-42 in advance to the AFC Championship game. That, we was, should a also... bad, that was a bad day because the game afterwards was even worse. We made a lot of money We did. Day. We got the Jags the money line. We, should, we money. should also point out, though, we, we also made a lot of money for the entirety of that season because that was the year Tim thought there was no way the Jaguars right. won more than five and a half games. And we bet the Jags to win the division, we too, did, yeah. like seven to one. Yeah, that was a good year. Yeah, like I said, the Vikings and Saints was the later on that afternoon. That was not a good day. Tim said that there was no chance Notre Dame would lose to Clemson by more than 19 and a half points at the Cotton Bowl. The final <laughs> score of that game, 30 to three. That's rough. But you know what? They went out and blew out Alabama a week later. So I don't feel too bad about it. Clemson was just that much better than everybody else. Yeah, it's like. I mean, it hurt, that, but like it hurt less when Alabama got blown those ones. Don't really register for me. Like it's not as egregious as his like NFL draft. Like it, like yeah. As soon as he gave that pertain to the tank. Jets, you know, like the, the Baker stuff, the the Kirk Cousins things. He should be of able course, to walk no back. He should be able. To, right. He should be able to walk back like a normal human would. But this is just like a guy like hoping Make, making the best bad for his yeah. team in a oh, big. Oh, well, we all have bad game. takes. Yeah. But yeah. Some of these- like, there's no segment on the show here for like all the good picks I made. Was that I the don't, actual? I don't think you understand the point yeah. of this. Like, I gave that free money parlay on American Thanksgiving, which hit. And then yeah, like, you ain't talking about one parlay. parlay. Your parlay record's like two and forty-four, and you're here <laughs> referencing the one. Uh, yes. Question from the audience, sir. It was actually. It was actually a teaser. That it was a teaser that couldn't have lost time. either way. I Both ways actually won. All right, you could have picked the opposite and won that teaser. Oh my God, look at me. Oh I'm, yeah, that was Thanksgiving. Yeah. Every teaser hit. Every, yeah. I middled right. my teaser. All the right. games middled. Look at me. I'm so great. He <laughs> went, I believe the final record for the year on his teasers was 3 and 17. Imagine having someone say this, these things about you, and then the one thing you go to to defend <laughs> yourself your I hit a three as, teaser as your one once. thing is your teaser, like on a Thanksgiving. <laughs> the New Orleans Saints, prior uh, to their matchup hurt. <laughs> in the NFC Divisional <laughs> round against the Minnesota Vikings, Tim declared the score would be 24-23 Saints. After congratulating <laughs> himself on Twitter, Case Keenum completed a Hail Mary game-winning touchdown pass to Stefan Diggs, giving them the win and ruining Tim's exact <laughs> prediction of the game. The only Jeff- thing I would change is that wasn't a Hail Mary. A Hail Mary is oh. when you throw it to I the can't end. find it. Me and Tim, I guess, correspond more than, than I let on, so it's hard to find. But he was in my DMs unsolicited bragging to me <laughs> about how how bang on he is he can't wait for the next pick show because he's got so much pattern of his own back to do oh, that is all man. true that is exactly what happened <laughs> that- maybe next time don't take to twitter until the game is over 
Jesus. Well, I thought it was. It, it required. Yeah, of course, you thought it was. It, it required a huge Ander curse to go the other way. It required the craziest ending of all time of a pro football game for me to get that wrong. So I felt justified. I wouldn't even say that. that. I'd say that Dolphins game yeah. against the Patriots was even crazier. Like for an but ending. that was a regular yeah. season. But no, you, did, you, you didn't specify regular season or not. You said it was the craziest ending to a well, football. Maybe game. I guess at I the time that was, actually, that was that later. That was later. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks to the curse. The Vikings ended up winning the game. Uh, Last playoff game they're ever going to win as long as Kirk Cousins is their quarterback. I mean, we, we might have to start betting Vikings futures like right I don't now. mind the Vikings this year. Uh, you didn't being... last year either. Where did that get you? We got two more. LeBron James. Tim stated he didn't see that there was any chance LeBron would join the Los Angeles Lakers, thus forcing him to go to Los Angeles. San Francisco Giants. Tim picked the Giants to make the NLCS, Carrion. They proceeded to win only 73 games and missed the playoffs by approximately... 18 games. Bumgartner got for, hurt like the first week of the year. Yeah, right honest. after Tim made the, they had three injuries like within Tim making the pick. Bike. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ugh, yeah. Man. That was unfortunate. So there are three. There's a gold, silver, and a bronze. I think we're very clear on what the <laughs> yeah. winner is. I was going to say, my, my prediction what, would be What that, is playing for second place here? But I would say, is 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 the Saints winning? Was it like 40, 50 percent? 52 percent of the vote it, it goes to, to the, the New Orleans way. Saints. And when we do a historical custody, maybe after five years, yeah. that's up there with the Jordan Speed, the say. La La Lands, the killing eight bells. <laughs> I forgot about eight bells. I always do. Killing that's not funny. Why are you laughing? That killing Roger bell. Moore. Poor had to be put down <laughs> on the track. Excuse me, sir. You mean that poor athlete? Yeah, she was a gallant athlete. And... Uh, you know, I still, I'm still bothered by that. Yeah, because you killed her. Yeah, I would be all too. The reason why horses should be allowed in the Olympics to join the parade of nations. Because I no one wants to walk through <laughs> shit, you moron. <laughs> it's bad enough that there's cops around town riding fucking horses that shit no, everywhere. Hey, let's do, to let's do the parade of nations. Oh, flag. no. I'd be proud to have those glorious horses come in during the parade of nations. You could ride them if you wanted to. <laughs> or you could stand next to them and walk with them, and they can have the garlands around their neck, and people could appreciate those majestic creatures. I, I think we do ourselves a disservice by not allowing that. I don't know why Horses are athletes too. Like that's the stance you like to take. Horses are athletes too. Imagine how bad that would smell. I don't hate horses, but like it's such a moronic. <laughs> like all the logistics that go into that oh, freaking event. Man. Let's just trot out the horse. What if, <laughs> the what if, horse what if they got like to sit next to you? In the but stands? these are very well-behaved horses. Remember, these are just your run-of-the-mill workhorses. What happens when like jets They're start going overhead and fireworks like, start going off? Mr. Peanut has to sit down now. Yeah, Mr. Peanut would crack it up. <laughs> it's true though when they start when they bring out the <laughs> well, fireworks have for a the <laughs> Maybe that can. <laughs> Maybe that can be. Uh, if Rob, you're watching, which I'm sure you are. If anyone out there too, if someone can keep track of when Tim tells a story or joke that makes only him laugh and throws him into a fit of gigs, that would be an excellent cat. Oh man! So coming in third place with eight percent of the vote. <laughs> Poor Christian Hackencast. Yeah, I was gonna say we we spend a lot of time talking about how Tim ruined like Jarek McKinnon's career because McKinnon was like promising, I guess. Like we all knew Hackenberg sucked, so maybe that's why we don't really spend more time on it. But man, Tim didn't give him a chance. Hackenberg spent almost an entire year before his draft year being like a top ten NFL pick. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yep. The J like the coach, like uh I think like Bill O'Brien was was helped develop him when yeah, he was yeah, uh that was, that was post yeah, that was State. that was post sandusky yes yes it was right out of that so everyone really liked bill o'brien coming in like how good he was with the coach like that people thought and then he just continued to tumble in the well, he hit, he hit round, the sideline right? reporter in his first practice oh yeah i forgot about he that. was the only person to ever receive a like a non-factual roto world update <laughs> where they I just went a, out of their way to be like I he's going to, to suck i need to put this out there when the day finally happens that the Chargers need to go to another quarterback, I will like much like Tim throw everything I have verbally and emotionally behind that person being great. Sure. Would, would you wait until they're actually on the team before making these proclamations, or would you pick one oh, guy no, no, I, be all in on him when the Chargers don't get him? He's the worst <laughs> quarterback of all time. No, yes, they would. I would wait for them to have the rights to the player before I decided. That I was oh, going to like when they had like when they had Eli's rights. 
listen, you got to be a team player. <clears throat> Number, Number two, two, with 13% of the vote, a very profitable one for us, Jeff. Okay. The Pittsburgh Steelers yep. with their no chance to beat Saxonville. Tim, you love Saxonville so much. I think they're going to be really good this season with Foles. We'll see about that. that uh, and, of course, game. with 52% of the vote, one of the most Andrew Kerr's things of all time, the final play oh, of God. the New Orleans Saints. Oh. Again, those two games the were on the same day. day. Oh, they were on the same yeah. day. That's right. Yeah, the one was the... Is the that the most cursed day? Yeah, because the Steelers game was at two o'clock and the Saints game. Was I mean, at like clearly of of the year, because how else could you have two things from the list appear from one day? You know what's missing? Well, I bet the widow of Roger Moore would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't or, know why you're laughing. Or at that John moment. John B. Anderson's great 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 grandson. <laughs> what's missing? Oh, I feel like maybe it was in December. Maybe it was maybe it was two years ago. But the game where. Tim was on the Chiefs and they sucked, then got off them. The Chiefs were good and they made the playoffs and he got back on the Chiefs and said there was no way they could lose to the Titans. And then Mariota threw the touchdown to himself. Is that two that years ago? The, that was two. No, that that, that uh, playoff game was the night before, it was the weekend before. It would have been early January 2018 when Mariota. Yeah, it would have been the same playoff season. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Mariota one. did that against the Patriots, didn't he? No, it was against no, the Chiefs. No, Mariota did the Chiefs. that against the Chiefs. Ma- Mariota son? Yeah, I did that against oh. the Chiefs. Yeah, it was, it was against the Chiefs. Chiefs. And, and Tim said there was no the chance game. that the Chiefs right. could okay. lose. Then we all bet the okay. Titans and then money they played line. They won. The, the next week, the Titans played the Patriots. And right. got absolutely right. crushed. And again, another example, the Patriots never playing hard teams in the playoffs, with last year being an exception. Well, you know what? Teams. You want to talk about all the good fortune they've gotten, but you're you're conveniently missing that you Andrew cursed two quarterbacks <laughs> in their run to an AFC title three years ago. You broke Derek Carr's leg and gave them the free path. So, you know, you might want to look in the mirror when you're talking about Patriots luck. Clark and Mariota broke their leg on the same day in the same way. Oh, we like, know. Yeah, we, we remember you proclaimed that they were both going to meet in the AFC Championship I game on the, the pick show that week. Even I that game last Raiders. year versus the, the Chargers, where the Chargers got absolutely blown out. The way he was talking about that game that week was, like he said, literally, I'm paraphrasing, but the Chargers are the perfect team designed to go beat the Patriots. I still think that that's true. They just had a bad game. They got literally exploded off the field in like they 10 did. minutes. They had a bad game. It happens. Just just own up to it. What, I have what, nothing to own up to. What, what, over under what custies, annual custies, are we going to get to before Tim admits there's the curse? I don't think it's ever going to happen. Like if, if, if he, he did, But what if he did? What if he did admit it? Would its powers go away? I think so. I think that's all I think it, it would too. There is no curse. If you keep living by that, you're going to keep being a loser when it comes to this stuff and cursing everything in sight. Oh, question from the audience. Sir, yes. I haven't, I haven't seen Christopher Walken around in a while. That's true. I, I mean, the people need to need to hear some hits here, I thought he was going to present at this award show. Yeah, <laughs> he was. I mean, Roger Moore was actually first on tap when I did it before last year. He's dead. He can't do anything. But do you remember who was the villain in A View to a Kill, Tim? Is he on the line? Yeah, I was because... The good actors that they had lined up for that movie were too busy and thought it was too bit of a part to hang out with a 60-year-old Bond. So instead, it was me, and I bleached my hair blonde. It was a very bad role for me. I also had this watch in me while I was the villain. <laughs> well, I uh, I have to go now. My uh, My friend needs me. Goodbye. Oh, bye, Christopher. I don't know why he like can just show up like this. It's crazy. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not heard that before? <laughs> I've heard it before, but I remember that being was worse better. Than normal, yeah. I remember it, it, like... it didn't even sound like his voice changed. <laughs> it sounded like a somewhat bad Bill Clinton impression. I think. I yeah. think. Yeah. It was definitely closer to Bill Clinton. I think. Right. Why, why does Christopher there. Walken have a southern twang all of a sudden? He doesn't have a southern twang. <laughs> just. It sounds like you're preacher Gary. <laughs> No, he just has an unusual cadence. What is Bill he, Clinton. This, Bill this, Clinton. This isn't even your normal walk. I think you have to, you have a trigger word. I think you have to start by saying, well, you see, and then you get into it. But well, this is. You see, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Mr. Gary. It's Mr. Gary. It's Mr. It's Mr. Gary. <laughs> this is the way I always sound when I'm talking to my buddy Robert Wagner. Oh. Jesus. 
Oh, Tim man. going real dark. Tim, no, Tim, no, Tim, no. Tim, I Tim, getting, down that Tim, road. Tim getting really mad that he killed Roger Moore. Yet he, all he wants to do is laugh about the murder of Natalie Wood. I wasn't even going there with that. Those guys <laughs> so, are Oh, yeah, so, so you bring up Christopher Walken in correspondence with Robert Wagner, and that's not what you're getting at? <laughs> <laughs> Friends of his he would hang out with in Hollywood. Wow. If anyone Walken. wants to win uh, next year's Best Picture at the Custies, uh, please Photoshop a Who Killed Roger Moore onto a Who Framed Roger Rabbit poster. <laughs> no, do not do that. Do not do that. No, 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 no. I do not want to see that. I don't want to... No, please do not do that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, who killed Roger Moore? It wasn't me. <laughs> now, see, that is a terrible impersonation. I never claimed I was going to do the impression, unlike uh, you. Mine is very good. You see, this is the way he talks oh. with almost perfect alacrity. <sighs> Gary, Jeff, favorite moments from the second annual Custies? Oh, I just think reliving it, getting to relive every take. When we do the do the order next year, I think cuss story might be the best category. Yeah. Oh, well, we already have a subjectively incorrect, for... subjectively correct. I can't think of anything in 2019 that would be on this level, guys. Pam, Pam on steak. Okay, well, I was talking about like an event that took place. Well, the, the year is young. Yeah, we, we we still have an entire football. You've season. literally already cursed a lot of people and teams. <laughs> oh, One I particularly would... important to me. Oh, I say let the quote unquote curse do its worst. I'm not worried. I will say 2019, Tim brought a bit of a big game swagger to some of his golf picks. He got two picks right this year which, in, in which, big which events. Beat his got, like, previous four, right the players. He got a major. He got two, some. He has two wins this I, year. I had four winners. You don't have four <laughs> wins. You have two wins. We do the show every week, and we keep track of the wins. You have two winners this year, which beat your total from the previous four years. So that's impressive. I think I had more than that. Are you just claiming stuff now? I'm trying to think through, because I had McElroy. I had Dustin. Uh, who else did I hit? That, that, that was it. He oh. wouldn't like pick Brooks because he so, yeah. used them, but he picked them, but he doesn't yeah, know doesn't how count. to make a when, proper When you don't pick. make one of your three picks to win, that doesn't count as you picking him to win. Because he didn't know how oh, to properly one play one. the game, so he cost himself um, a pick. For me, personally, 2019, when he said nobody, he has never seen someone mix a slushie. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. That's, 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 crazy. Uh, that's crazy. What are you talking about? You're lying. No, I'm not. Our friends and the people I hang out with, when they have slushies, it's all uniform. I've never seen people. Yeah, that's the the amount of time he spends Hold on. in 7-Eleven. Hold on. I'm there, not even just there, talking about there, your there friends. There is a specific, yeah, well, he doesn't, real, he doesn't realize that at, outside of, like, the six people he knows, other people do different things. He assumes everyone is just uniform across the board. There is a very specific reason that you only ever get blue slushies. You know that, right? No, it's not just that. It's like when I see people buying them at do you, the store. Do you know why you're only ever I, asked to get blue slushies? Yeah, I am not going to try. I'm trying not to answer the question, as what, you can what, tell. Why do you think that is? I just I don't want to go down this road. The I, answer I is because no one drinks blue slushies, for one thing, so they're always available. And two, you can't be trusted to do more than one thing at once. Blue That's slushie, that is the main reason that you would fuck it up otherwise. I am a skilled multitasker. No one believes that. <sighs> he can't even watch golf. He needs a 30-minute break. He can't even do this golf. show and open a can of Coke at the same time without getting it all over him. It jizzed in his face. There have got to be things like the, how we worked the mute button or the audio log. Was that this oh. year? Me, me, no. Remember when he thought that this was actually tracking his <laughs> voice? <laughs> Well, that you know what I again had people in my DMs that week. That's, that's, that, that, okay, screen. Can week. you please screenshot these and send them to us, or otherwise this never happened. No, these people are sending these comments to me in confidence. So it never happened. Is yeah, what you're saying? What are they saying? Oh, we really thought Pat was hard on you. I fell for that also. No, like, no, no, not that. They'll just say, you know what, that take was actually a good take. And uh, <laughs> how would you think that is a good take? Are your DMs open? Oh yeah. Oh, God. I can't imagine the cesspool that ends up in your DMs. Yeah, sometimes it's not the best. But anyway, I get a lot of people <laughs> afraid of your tyranny, perhaps, of you yelling at them when they agree with me. We'll just quietly say, actually, 
you're hundred percent right. Summer is trash or something like that. I'll see you on the bus later. Yeah. I'll see you on the bus <laughs> to tell you you're also not cussed. <laughs> Sounds like stuff that happens all the time, Tim. Why would I make it up? Because you're a liar and you're super cast. No, I've won awards. For what? Not being guest. Really? Yeah. Happened. <laughs> Is it just like when you gave yourself that first place trophy at your party? No, oh, again. That you bought at the dollar store for yourself? I did not. That's that. that could be on most cast story. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty cast. Yeah, it's gotta be actually. Yeah. That's Number really one time. You're really pathetic. Most cussed. I don't know. His whole shtick with the Rams last year in the Super Bowl. I don't even remember that. The, well, he's just trying to, like, reverse the Patriots. It obviously didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just very disingenuous. Yeah. Well, Again, there's a whole NFL season. There's yeah. Time. Listen, if there's you're time. out there, like I mentioned, smash the like. Leave your draft handle. Shut up. I'm talking. When I do the giveaways, why do you feel the need to talk over me? Why? Is it because you're not listening or you're doing it on purpose? It's too socialist of you to give away stuff. Yeah, I'm just trying to help out the people. You're anti the people. I'm trying to give out bucks for people, and you're over there just talking over it. Go ahead, Bernie Sanders. I won't interrupt you. No, listen, as as per Tim, all of the giveaways are canceled. No giveaways for this show. Thank Tim. Thank Tim on Twitter for it. If you thank Tim on Twitter for it, for getting rid of all the giveaways, because he doesn't want you to have free DraftKings dollars, then tag me in your DraftKings handle, and you can be in a draw for 20 DK bucks as well. How about that? And also, every time that you do the picture of the peacock, Adam, just you know, tag your handle. You'll also get into a draw for 20 DK bucks. Uh, good one, Tim. Yeah, way to go, Tim. Thanks. Your med cheese are going to be lit <laughs> up, bro. <laughs> uh, oh. I want to thank Gary and Thorne for being here and for being a winner. Third place. Third place. I'll yeah, take, you I'll take third got place. Got yourself a trophy. I'll take third place. Uh, Jeffrey Feinberg, thank you for being here and being a part of that loyal Darnold bombs. Because you kind of that really like is a great photo. That really is that. That is ape, and I wouldn't say it if it weren't true. That's ape plus one. Yeah, as we as we've yeah. shown throughout this yeah. show, is that you definitely will not say things that aren't true for sure. Last person I'd like to thank the coin. He's over there somewhere, but you now he's such a valuable member. Of the show. Paul Shaughnessy for putting all the nice graphics together. Rob McIntyre uh, for, you know, tabulating all these results. And I think that'll do it. Um, that's everyone I want to thank. I'm Pat Mayo. I guess I should thank Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That's not my name. Heard it was. That's why I'm this was. Days, I'm going to give my 12 days of Christmas rank. Hey, hey, it's the Custies. People think you're custing around. <laughs> Was that your favorite song growing up? By the Monkees? No, it wasn't. No, it's the Custies. So, Tim, um, since the floor is yours and you've been a good sport about this, 12 Days of Christmas, let's hear them. Okay. So. It doesn't matter what the 12 Days of Christmas <laughs> are by your rankings. You're going on mute, pal. Thanks for stopping by. And thank you all for watching out there, getting the giveaway, sub to the show, and I hope you had a great time. We'll be back. In 28 months for the third annual Custies, I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Family experience. Experience.